Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start you guys with announcements. It was great to see um, some new faces yesterday in the virtual class. So um, I hope, hopefully we get to see more of you guys on Friday at 11.45. That's the next virtual class. We're still deciding our schedule for next week, and we decide that schedule based on your feedback. So give us your feedback, guys. Do you want to see that 7 a.m.? Um, class option added to the uh, schedule. Also, what do you prefer? Did you prefer Zoom over my body or vice versa? Um, we're still using my body for this week, but if we have more votes that go one or another way, we will decide to make the switch over for next week, potentially, um, if not soon enough, okay? Um, so again, hopefully we see more faces tomorrow, guys. I'm gonna pass it over to Yash here for a lead workout. All right, guys, so we got a AMRAP 15 today. 10 push-ups, 15 second wall facing handstand hold, and then 20 air squats at the end of each round. So this is more on the upper body um, that will be straight in this workout. So for the push-ups, I would say even if you could do 10 push-ups, um, I would say try to break it up a little bit in the beginning, go seven, quick break three. Um, and then for the wall facing handstand hold, try to hold it for the full 15 seconds. This way, with the push-ups, you're not draining your wall facing handstand hold and you're being more consistent with the upper body stuff. Then you're gonna finish off each round for 20 air squats. So those air squats, you wanna be moving the entire time. Uh, no breaks there. Even if it's a little bit slower, still try to keep those air squats cycling. So I'll be projecting about seven to getting into that eighth round. So that's about two minutes around. You can watch the clock as you're doing this. Um, obviously, you won't be able to see the clock if you're uh, if you climb or somewhere else with the wall facing against it. Hold some counting head for that. Push-ups should be pretty fast. The air squats will probably take you the longest to get through. So aim for about seven to eight rounds here for that hand wrap 15. I'm going to pass it over to Eddie for the afterburner. Afterburner, we got another uh, flexible mobility drill here. Two minutes. Um, that is on the longer side, but still not long enough for a stretch. You really want to be stretching for like four minutes to see some permanent change. Um, so we're keeping it two minutes. So why I mention that if you want to go longer is one, go longer if you want to go longer. Two, if you find a stretch that you really like that is working for you, try to do it every day. Or maybe it's part of your warm up. Uh, do a minute of it every day in your warm up. Just kind of start programming it yourself based on what you're seeing that is helping you with the, uh, these mobility uh, drills and stretching hands. We'll see you next though for the warm up. Okay, let's get ready to warm up here. We're doing an AMRAP 5. So remember, this is a warm up. Doesn't mean you're going out of the gates like a workout. You're ramping up, warming up. You're trying to get the heart rate uh, going uh, up. By the end, push yourself a little bit, but at the start, keep it slow. First movement, you're alternating that spider leg. So you're gonna step forward, you're gonna go down towards the floor, open up that growing. The back feet doesn't have to touch the ground, but if you want to drop to the ground, squeeze your bum, get the hip flexor into that. So you don't have to see what uh, your body is feeling like, then base it off that. So you're going to go one side, other side, going for six total. Then you're going to take it to the floor for your glute bridge. So on the glute bridge, you're sitting down, heels close to your hips, you're laying onto your back. From here, of course, slightly activated. You're then driving your hips up to the ceiling. Okay, squeeze your glutes, hold that for a second, back down. Then you're going back up again, hold it for a second, back down. We're doing 12 of these total of the glute bridges. Once you're done that, you're going for 15 seconds per side of your arm raises, but we're doing them in that plank position. So in that plank position, if you gotta go wider or closer, do so. Make sure your shoulders are not below your hands, be in line or slightly over. As you're holding it with the one arm, you're going to do the T raises. So the point of that, when you're raising your arm, Keep it in line to your shoulder to help you activate those muscles around your upper back that control um, your shoulder position and engage to retract and depress your, uh, your scap. So as you're going up, you're trying to retract your scap but also depress it downwards so you're not shrugging. So it's not just to go up 
can kind of swing the arms. Be mindful of your shoulder position. Pull it back and down through your scap by retracting uh, your scap on your way up. So you can do 15 seconds worth on the one side. Once you're done the 15 seconds, then you're switching to the other side. You can add a little bit of weight. Um, if you like, very, very light guys, going for a total of 30 seconds in that plank position before you start the next round. Again, go for five minutes um, for this warm -up. When you're done the five minutes, then you're gonna finish off with the body tighter. So, core nice and tight. Find yourself some spot on the wall. Arms lock out, but really tuck your elbow to help you activate your tricep. From there, toes down on the floor, push them down, squeeze your bum. Get hollow, so tuck in that rib cage. You're gonna hold that for 90 seconds. This is a great primer for any handstand work and it really teaches uh, that body awareness of how your body should feel when you're upside down. Guys. Have a good uh, warm up and enjoy the workout. All right guys, we're here for the workout movement. So uh, in that AMRAP 15, you're starting off with those 10 push-ups. So for those push-ups guys, uh, remember you can go off your knees um, or you can go off those toes. Just remember you want to keep that body in a nice straight line the entire time. As you come down, keep those elbows tucked into your side. Really try to activate that upper back, especially when you're driving yourself up. Uh, one more thing, make sure your hand positioning, your uh, fingers are slightly pointed out and they're not facing straight out to the side or uh, forward. So a little bit of a turn to get those elbow pits facing straight forward and allow those elbows to go right by your sides when you're doing those push-ups. So, after those push-ups, you have that wall-facing handstand hold, 15 seconds. Um, first progression, I would say, start top of your push-up. That's one progression to start off with, really just staying locked out, those elbows and that core. Second progression, you can take it to that dive bomber. So going wide to the feet and then locking your hands in a little bit so you're more inverted. If you're comfortable, you guys can go for your wall-facing hold. So again, just walking yourself up to wherever you feel comfortable, holding that for that 15 seconds, and then controlled again on the way back down. So pick whatever progression you think you can stay consistent with for the 15 minutes. Last movement is the 20 air squats. So I want you guys, again, take your time with this, with those air squats, again, feet outside hip width, toes slightly flared out, just like that push up. And then make sure that chest is tall as you're doing that squat. Make sure you're feeling the weight all amongst your foot, so not just the heels, not just the toes. Really trying to feel that midfoot as you're doing that air squat. So stay consistent with your movements, break them up if you need to. Aim wrap 15, 10 push ups, 15 seconds of that wall facing hold, or that wall facing handstand hold, and then 20 air squats. Hope you guys enjoy the workout. We'll see you guys for the after. Okay, let's cool off here again with some stretching, a two minute stretch of the saddle stretch. Feel free to use an object to support you. It could be yoga blocks. I got my friend Wilson here. Um, so I'm gonna use that to demonstrate the progression. But if you don't need that, you don't have to use it. Well, saddle stretch here again. You wanna start by first, you're upright, squeeze your butt. Notice, I don't know if you guys can see it, Notice my hip, I have that tilt of my hip. I wanna tuck my pelvis in before I sit down to make sure that my hip's in a better position. From there, always double check. Can you squeeze the glute? Do you need to shuffle around? Kind of reset your hip and pelvis position. If that feels good, now you can start working your way down. The intent in the area of focus here is to not just stretch your quads, Get a little bit of hip flexor. I know for myself, if I'm not feeling too tight in that area, I actually start getting my groin a little bit as well, just because I'm squeezing my glutes the entire time. So squeeze your butt as you go down. Now, you can use that object behind you to support. Notice the difference, I'm not activating my glutes, I'm activating my glutes. That's gonna protect your low back, so squeeze your bum, keep your core tight. If this feels okay and you're looking to progress it 
a little further, drop down to the elbows. Okay, again, anytime you drop down in progression, you're squeezing your glutes. If that feels fine, take it to the floor, guys. Squeeze your bum, keep your core slightly active. Hold, hang out there for two minutes, find that progression. Maybe you're progressing within the two minutes. When you come back up, guys, use those arms so it doesn't hurt your back, guys, and prop yourself back up. And two minutes, when you find that stretch that you like, start repeating it a little bit more throughout the week, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.